Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for the School of Design's invitation to this wonderful forum. Uh, I see very beautiful campus, very well the nicely designed building. I'm really impressed. Well, today's topic I'm going to share. Sorry, where is the, my title page? Okay. Uh, today I want to share something about the research we've been doing for uh, many years. Uh, the title is Data Driven Gerontology Design for Smart Gate Analysis. Okay, so uh, in this talk, I'm, I, I wish to share some of our experiences in this field together with our thinking uh, in this uh, research. Okay, I'm from a School of Public Health Shenzhen campus of Sun Yat-sen University. We know that the healthcare, the canton of healthcare has been evolving all, uh, all, all the time. At the very beginning, when we ha feel something going wrong with our body, we go to see doctor and uh, receive some treatment. Uh, that, that, that is we, what we call corrective health care. That is, when things go wrong, we seek for the help. Um, but people realize that is not good enough. That is, uh, when we realize uh, the problem is already too late. So we want to do some, do, do it earlier. So nowadays we do annual physical checkup. That is good thing because uh, we do blood test, we do MRI, uh, something else to make sure we, the, our, our health is, is okay, uh, nothing going wrong. Um, at this stage, we call it a preventive health care. So, with preventive health care, we're able to uh, find the problems, the, sim the disease symptom at very early stage, so we can slow down the disease pro the progression. Um, however, we feel that that is still not good enough. Okay, so, you know, I'm from a school of public health. Um, the students we are teaching are in major of uh, preventive medicine. In the class, we always emphasize how the preventive medicine is important. We see, uh, we see that, okay, uh, you, although you are not able to, um, maybe you are not able to reverse the disease pro progress uh, uh, with the surgery because you are, not, you are not going to be a doctor. You cannot do surgery. You cannot provide treatment to the patient. But you know you are do something equally important or even more important in certain scenarios because you do preventive medicine. You can prevent the disease, okay? So that is something we want to emphasize. So we call it proactive health care. That is, we want to identify some early sign of disease or some uh, health problems uh, through the analyze through the analy analysis of uh, vital signs, the uh, and the um, some signals collected from uh, sensors. Any type of sensor can be wearable, can be environment based. So together with the uh, AI algorithms, we are talking about the AI in the morning, in the afternoon. Uh, before I attend this forum, I uh, I I cannot feel AI. Uh, maybe uh, uh, not not that uh, uh, m maybe not that acceptable in the in, in this field. But now I realize that okay, AI has been seemingly uh, merged into uh, many application field. Okay, so uh, with uh, sensors and AI technologies, we hopefully we can do the so-called personalized the health monitoring and management um, to find the early symptom of certain disease to prevent the, uh, to prevent the, the, the disease pr progression. Okay, so that is the uh, aim. So uh, many professors have been talking about the burden of aging in the morning and afternoon session. So I skip the detail here. We all realize how important the, uh, the, the, the how, how critical this problem is. So, uh, but I want to see something uh, that is related to my talk today is for the gates analysis. Because 
We know the uh, aging, there can be many public health problems related to aging. Among many chron chron chronic disease and health care problems the, uh, the elderly are facing, four has been recognized as a one of the most important cause of injuries among this population. So, how to, so our, our question is how to um, uh, identify the early symptom of uh, high fall risk. So, and to this can help us uh, to take some interventions to slow down the occurrence probability of falls. So that is a basic idea of this research. Uh, we know for uh, gait analysis is very important in fall prevention, but beyond that, gait analysis can be powerful in some other field. For example, in the identification of some uh, neurodegenerative disorders like uh, dementia, Alzheimer's disease, and others. And uh, this technique is very important in the rehabilitation um, scenarios. Um, cascade directly influences mobility, independence, and overall functional capacity of individual. Uh, we know, okay, we know gate analysis is very useful and important to uh, ensure the quality of living. However, we know that our, we don't have enough healthcare resources to provide this continuous, uh, this continuous uh, uh, gate analysis or gate monitoring services. Um, so uh, there is a gap between our overstretched uh, healthcare system and the increasing uh, aging, uh, the demand of increasingly uh, aging society. So there is a gap. To fill this gap, we hope to leverage the uh, sensor technology and AI to, uh, to, um, to release the burden of aging so we, we have witnessed many types of sensor technologies in the past decade, uh, ranging from the IMU uh, pressure sensor, the power sensor, infrared sensors, to they can be equipped, uh, can be attached uh, uh, or embedded to many types of devices, like uh, with the band, the, uh, the shirt, and the, can be in the camera and others. Um, so among these many sensor technologies, we have the question, okay, there are so many technologies. Is there uh, the, so, the, the so-called the best one for the gate analysis or the best set of sensor to solve the problem? So that is the one question one, we're looking for the solutions. So with those technologies, we have to um, to achieve the real-time monitoring of health status of elderly. However, we know that what sensor can provide us are just the raw signals, the data, the data. It, the data has to be interpreted. Otherwise, it uh, cannot be useful for, the, uh, for drawing the conclusion about the, status, the health status of individual. So sensor alone is not enough for continuous health monitoring. Um, we may or may not agree with this statement in the World uh, AI Conference. It stated that without big data analysis, wearable devices are just accessories for mobile phones. You see, um, in this chart, um, actually, there is a gap between the sensor technology and uh, the individual, or what we call it population. So, okay. so AI, what's the role AI played here is to bridge the gap between the technology and the outcome. The outcome. Um, so uh, we, if we find a proper design to link every element together, where hopefully we can do personalized health care. So if we break down the entire uh, framework into several stages, here are actually there are four stages. We uh, 
uh, we can see that to do the uh, to achieve personalized assessment of health, we have four very important elements in this entire pipeline. First, subject. Second, sensors. Uh, third one, identify digital biomarkers from the C sensor signal data, and uh, at last, implement the gate monitoring system by combining everything together. So the question is how to empower gerontology design from institution-centric systems to patient-centric system. Okay, so now let's, uh, now let's look at the first uh, important uh, element subjects. At this stage, the first stage, we need to understand the need of our population, the need of the health, uh, healthcare provider, and to know the characteristic of the elderly and uh, to know their acceptance toward this new technology because, uh, because we know some uh, elderly, they, no matter we, we argue how important the, this technology is, how useful it is, maybe they don't believe in it. So we need to do the research on that part. Okay. So in the past years, we have conducted uh, some uh, field study um, among different population, different uh, population to understand their need, their characteristics um, through, uh, through uh, using the combination of different sensor types and uh, different AI methods. But this one was conducted in uh, University of Hong Kong University, uh, the, the University of Hong Kong Shenzhen Hospital is in uh, it was in the rehabilitation department. Our target was the um, stroke survivor. Um, they hope to find an automated way to identify the gait disorder in this uh, stroke patient. Um, um, you, uh, the, the hope to find an automated way, because uh, as most of the time, the, this evaluation will involve a lot, uh, many efforts from the PT physiotherapist. So uh, can we make it in a more uh, uh, cost-effective way? So in this study, we investigate the combination of this uh, variable IMU inertial measurement unit and depth camera. Um, and the, our PT, um, during the standard test, uh, they gave us the evaluated score of the gait disorder. So basically, we receive raw signal data from the sensors. On the other hand, we have the gold, gold standard from the PT. So what we do is to find a model to map from, to map the, to map from the raw signal data to the uh, go standard. So in the future, once the signal data comes in, we can predict the uh, status of the patient. Uh, does the person has a high probability of disorder or not? So this, uh, the, this is a field study. The other, I, the other things I'd like to share, uh, this one is a, a study uh, we conducted once I was uh, working in Hong Kong. We work together with uh, um, the, the healthcare center. Um, the purpose to assess the full risk of this community drilling the older adults through the uh, different type of sensors and uh, data-driven method. I skip the detail here. Um, and this one, the next one, is a study we recently conducted in Guangzhou. Our target now is uh, mild cognitive impairment. Because we know the, how, how, how critical this, uh, the cognitive de decline is. Um, however, um, at the very stage of the uh, cognitive decline, it's hardly to be recognized. Um, unless these older adults, they seek for help uh, by themselves, maybe to the clinics, to hospital, to receive some kind of test and um, uh, evaluated by the doctors. However, uh, we know 
that is uh, not enough for the screening of this MCI in older, uh, older adult population. But in this study, we uh, use this uh, uh, self, uh, self developed uh, devices or system. Okay, it combines with uh, the depth camera and the pad and the wearable device to measure the, um, uh, the inertial signal together with the skeleton data. You see here I show an example of our 3D skeleton data. It's reconstructed uh, through uh, depth camera and the computer, computer vision techniques. This uh, um, video clip uh, from a patient, but we speed up the uh, video playing a little bit. In fact, we cannot work this fast, okay. Um, so this, uh, what we uh, talked about, discussed about, is uh, the population, uh, different diverse population. In fact, after data analysis, we can uh, identify that, okay, for actually for different patient groups, we have their unique or common characteristic in gait. So next one is to identify the sensors we need for this type of gait analysis. Because we, we know sensors have different advantages and of course limitations. Some are more user friendly, some are high cost, some are uh, 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 low cost. So everyone can afford. So how to combine their advantages together is uh, what we want to investigate. So in this study, we, uh, this, uh, this study was conducted in our school. We uh, used uh, the uh, motion capture system, which is a gold standard uh, system in gain analysis, okay, equipped with eight cameras and uh, reflective markers attached to the human's body. And as well as the uh, IMU in the belt and the depth camera placed in front of the pathway. So we clip these three type of data and then do a comprehensive comparison to investigate their interchangeability and, uh, uh, com uh, and these uh, complementary, com complementary clarity. So uh, then last, we, after receiving, after collecting the data, we do this uh, comparative analysis to for, do further uh, investigation. This example shows the, the comparison between the AM, IMU and depth camera data. You see, this, da this data is from the three meter time the up and go test, okay? So uh, but it's very easy standard, uh, very easy and a standard test in gain analysis. The, uh, 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 the doctor asks the patient to walk, stand up, walk straight forward for three meters, then turn around for another three meters, then go, go, then, then sit down. So that, that is a, a general procedure. Now let's take a look at the uh, data from different sources. Um, the, as the left hand is uh, data from inertial sensor, the right hand is data from depth camera. Of course, the data is, uh, for this one, we compare the difference between the angles, uh, the, 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 key, the, the joint point. So we actually do, after plenty of analysis, we realize that, okay, for this type of test, actually inertial sensor is more sensitive do uh, for a certain motions, for example, turning, the turning, and uh, even they stand to up the motion. So uh, the similar examples we can observe is from the five times to five times to stand test. Um, as we can see, this uh, data from depth camera um, is more easily to help us identify the. Uh, different period of this test. Um, and next example is uh, from the Roomba test, or we call it a static balance test. But this, for this one, we can see inertial sensor can give us a more precise evaluation of 
this uh, of of the people's uh, stability. However, for the cam uh, depth camera, because the uh, the the test uh, is relatively static, so uh, during the data capturing, we meet uh, we may encounter a lot of missing data points. So the result may not that be, uh, may not that good. Okay, so now uh, we go to we come to the uh, the third part digital biomarker. This part we focus more on extracting the uh, the features the K we call it K features. Um, that's important to differ to to determine the difference between the normal population and the target patient population from the raw data. Okay, here I. Uh, I gave uh, two uh, I give one example of what we have doing we have been doing in the past. The, the regular processing is to extract the feature, different type of features from the raw signal through the signal processing technology and the machine learning. So for the first time, we propose these nonlinear features from extracted from the IMU signal to evaluate to measure the uh, patient irregularity, dynamic stability, and the self-similarity and the complexity in the, in the signal. Okay, so uh, for this type of these, uh, uh, features, we divided the, them into these three subcategories. Uh, due to the limited of time, um, I skip the technical detail here. So uh, if you're interested in learning more, you can Talk to me after this after this talk or okay it doesn't work. Oh sorry. It's a general model development procedure. Um, okay. Fine. So uh, uh, if you find this work interesting, uh, you can refer to this paper we published in a triple E G B H I. Okay, so the, our approach effectively addressed limitations in feature engineering commonly encountered uh, in signal processing based method, speci specifically their inability to handle those low frequency data. So the last one I'm going to share is um, <clears throat> how we implement this uh, gate monitoring system. Here we uh, bring the AI techniques into the uh, into the design, okay. So uh, here I, I give the detail because time's up. So uh, here we, we, we developed a new uh, data processing framework called multi-scale skeletal transformer for intelligent gate analysis, okay. So basically we transform the skeleton data into a pixel level images in three channels and then do a transformer modeling and the fit and the output fusion as a later stage. Okay, that is uh, our general flow chart of our of the proposed method. Basically include data input, pre-processing stage, then feature extraction, feature fusion output. So this is uh, our results. You can see as shown in the uh, in this uh, red frame, our proposed uh, our proposed method achieved a very high accuracy in identifying the gate disorder in uh, among those elderly. Okay, so uh, um, at last, we what well, we have we have finished all these four stages. So the last thing we can we want to do is to implement a entire a system by integrating the every element. This is my last uh, page, okay? Actually, I'm going to leave the demo of this system to my collaborator, Dr. Wang. So um, I, last thing I want to say that we are in the best era of AI, uh, coupled with sensor technology, hardware, and, uh, computation cap capability, where hopefully we can bring the benefit, more benefit to our society in elderly care. Okay, thank you.